Hey guys, Weeby News here, and today I'm going to be talking about the new information released recently regarding Akudama Drive, which is an anime collaboration by Tukio Games and Studio Piero. There was a trailer released recently, as well as an interview with Kadaka, who wrote the original plot, Tomohisa Taguchi, the director, and Sadahiko Tomonaga, a producer from Studio Piero. The interview was with Animate Times and is completely in Japanese, so I'll be using a translation by Kamun Kotino from Twitter. I'll be sure to link his accounts in the descriptions because he does a lot of translations for the community and is an awesome person to follow if you want to stay posted on these types of updates. But anyways, with all of that information out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into the video. So the anime is scheduled to air this July, and true to its previous announced headline of everyone is a villain or everyone is a baddie, this is about the Akudamas, a group of criminals, and he says that Akudama basically translates to baddie. Also, the concept's tagline was expanded to a story about evil people staying true to their life choices. And so far, there's been seven main characters announced. The setting is described as a long time ago, there was a full-scale war between Kanto and Kansai. Apparently, these are supposed to be two nations that share their names with Kanto and Kansai regions of Japan, but they're not actually them. And this ended up with Kansai becoming a colony to Kanto until its independence finally happened. However, this independence process heavily weakened the government and the police, causing crime to become more prevalent, and the criminals came to be known as Akudamas. The anime is set in a highly developed society, but still an extremely warped one. Anna wants to show how the Akudamas stay true to their identities in such a society. Many Akudamas are put together and their aesthetics conflict with each other. The fictional Kansai story is set in a cyberpunk version of the real-life 60s-70s Kansai. They chose this because of Kadaka's preference for his overseas audience. Osaka is more sought out by tourists right now than Tokyo, so it represents better a foreigner's image of Japan. Also, after the series was announced, Kadaka took to Twitter to discuss the plot a bit more. If you ask me what kind of anime it is, I would say the story takes place in Kansai. A lot of real villains appear and they do bad things after bad things and do more bad things. They kill a lot of people. It's like a late night anime that these days you don't see much of. Kadaka wrote the original plot plan for the anime, but the one who is responsible for turning this plan into an actual anime script is Norimitsu Kaiho. Apparently this is exactly how the Danganronpa 3 anime was um, kind of planned out as well. Also, the original character plans were by Kamatsuzaki, the person who does the art for Danganronpa, but the finalized, more new character designs are by Cindy H. Yamauchi. Looking at the art released a while back when Tukio was announced versus the art released just recently, you can definitely see a pretty big difference in the art style as well as differences in the character designs. There are three machine designers on the project, Sho Yamamoto, Haro Miyagawa, and Yukinobu Sunegi. The fact that there is three of them is pretty interesting. It is supposed to be kind of a cyberpunk theme, so I guess there is a lot of machines around, but it could mean that there is potentially mechas in the show as well. Apparently this project came to be because Kadaka and Studio Piero producer Sadahiko Tominaga were college classmates. After Kadaka got famous, Tominaga met him at a Danganronpa 1 stage theater event and invited him to do something together. Since crime movies like Pulp Fiction and The Usual Suspect were the most popular thing in their college days, they decided that their collab should be a crime anime in that style. The director, Taguchi, took the job because of how novel the idea of a cyberpunk Tarantino-style crime show suspense anime is. It's a common genre in movies, but it doesn't have very much presence in the anime community. The reason that Taguchi was chosen for the job is mainly for his genius with action scenes, since it seems like action is going to be a pretty big element in this anime. The title Akudama Drive was chosen because they would need a title for criminals, and Akudama was neat and uncommon enough of a word for villain. The drive part was apparently added to the name just because. Just like how the dog part in Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs doesn't mean anything. Next, there are some small descriptions for each of the characters. First, we have Civilian. She's voiced by Tamayo Kurosawa. As the name indicates, she's an ordinary girl that's constantly being a victim of Akudamas, even though she remains very self-willed. But even though she's called a civilian, it does seem like her character is still pretty morally gray. Some of her past cases involved cheating her boss into adultery and breaking up an Akudama group. She's described as being someone who knows how to take advantage of people as well as any of the other characters. Apparently the story will be told from her point of view as well, but we're not locked into her perspective, and the show is supposed to be more of a multi-protagonist story than anything. Being that it's crime suspense, it's supposed to be full of mysteries, and they're supposed to unfold at a very fast pace. The next character is Smuggler. He is voiced by Yuichiro Yumahara, a character with very little dialogue. He's very protagonistic in how he makes the most major moves among the seven main Akudamas but he still can't get much dialogue because not speaking is a big part of his character. I sort of feel like it might be some kind of trauma that makes him not want to talk very much or something along those lines. 
The reason I think this is because it mentions in the translation that he doesn't talk a lot, which sort of implies to me that he can talk, he just chooses not to. Also, you can see in the pictures that he has a prosthetic arm, so I kind of wonder if there might be a tragic event that relates to that that might be the reason why he doesn't talk. But this is all hypothetical on my part. There's not really enough information I feel like right now to make any good theories. Then we have Brawler, voiced by Shunsuke Takeuchi. He also voiced Dagnarapa's Ganta. He's a musclehead, but not as much of a musclehead as Thug. He still takes the charmingly simple attack first, think later approach to fighting though. He's an Akudama who doesn't see himself as a criminal. Next there is Hacker, voiced by Shun Horie. He was originally supposed to be a child character, but it felt wrong to have a child or a teenager in the setting. So he turned out to be a childish adult instead. And this is supposed to be evidenced by him wearing an eye patch to look cooler. I do find it ironic that um, they think it's uh, too dark of a setting for a child or a teenager to be in. But Kadaka's most famous work is just teenagers in a death game. But going back to Hacker, despite his chuny tendencies, he's also a big lover of cute things. So he uses a super cute drone as his weapon of choice. Next, we have Doctor, voiced by Megumi Ogata. And this is the same actress who portrayed Nagi and Kamida. And yeah, just from the picture, you can tell it is a very different type of character that she's playing this time. But she is a very good actress, so I'm looking forward to see her performance. The cast was lacking a main sex appeal character, so Kadaka tried to make a simple Fujiko Mine style character. Then they describe it that the more that he expanded on her, the more she became just a weird hypersexualized evictionist, and that she's not actually a real doctor. Thug is voiced by Subaru Kimura, and he is a lively, energetic character who absolutely can't do anything on his own. He lives by leeching on others, which will lead to a big friendship with Brawler. His trait of being useless alone is important to the story's theme of how Akudamas are very distant from one another. Then the last character is Serial Killer, voiced by Takahiro Sakurai. Described as a madman, but we don't really know exactly how. He's also described to be simple-minded, but not in an emotionless kind of way. He speaks mostly in poetic riddles. And with that being said, him being described as simple-minded actually applies to the entire cast. They're all supposed to be people that are just being honest to their own feelings, to the point that they ignore the law for it and end up piling up crimes. Also, some trivia for why the names are so vague. During plot planning, Kadaka apparently has a habit of doing everything with these type of simple descriptors and only giving characters real names at the very end. But his new co-workers didn't know that and they assumed that these were Reservoir Dog style kind of code names to keep the characters anonymous. Then when Kadaka said it was finally time to give them names, the staff wanted to keep them all the same. Also, in full Tarantino fashion, the director has more authority over the script than the draft writer, which means it's going to be more of a story by Taguchi than a story by Kadaka. Also, they want the comedy of the anime to follow a very Tarantino style of cynical and offbeat humor. But that concludes the new information for now. However, I did not um, name all of the staff members, so I'll be sure to link some articles below in the description if you guys want to read everybody else who is in the staff for the project. Also, we will be getting some more information on March 21st. There will be a TV program on Abema TV that will have appearances from the cast and crew. So we'll be getting some new information then as well. But yeah, overall, the concept seems pretty interesting. I like the idea of it. The character descriptions give me very large Black Lagoon vibes. And especially with all of this Tarantino talk, it makes me think it'll have like an overall similar feel with lots of action, violence, and criminal characters. I like the ideas of the characters being morally skewed. I think it could be interesting to explore why they became criminals and how the society and setting that they're in and that we were described affected them. In the interview, they mentioned Akidama's working alone being central to the theme of the show as well. I'm guessing it is just hard to trust people in this kind of like uh, warped society, but um, it is kind of funny because it makes me think the theme of the show is going to be friendship right now. <laughs> it's just kind of funny the idea of such like a seemingly like violent and like um, action-packed show and the main theme is just friendship. But let me know what you guys think of the theme. I don't know why, but that's like the only thing I can think of right now. But on the more serious side, I do think I'd really like to see this anime challenge the viewer into wondering whether the characters are morally right or wrong for the crimes that they commit. I think it's really interesting when shows explore the gray area of morality, and I think it makes for a lot of interesting discussions among fans as well. So, so I think it'd be really cool to have characters that are humanized, but they also do bad things and to kind of learn why they might justify it and what the world around them is like in order to push them to do so could just be an interesting idea to explore. I'm not really sure if that's the approach that they'll take with the show, but that's the direction I would kind of like to see, at least right now, just kind of reading the description and stuff. I am a little hesitant to get too excited for the show because it seems like the writing process is pretty similar to the Danganronpa 3 anime, which um, 
I don't know about you guys, but it's just aged kind of poorly for me. I enjoyed it while watching it. Afterwards, I thought, you know, it was okay, but there was a lot of flaws. And now I guess like, I guess since like the hype kind of dies down, you know, over time, it's like, oh man, there was, <laughs> those flaws are really, really bothering me a lot more now than they were right after finishing the show. So I've gotten to the point where I just really don't like the Danganronpa 3 anime when I think back on it. But I don't want to talk about too much of my complaints in this because I don't want to spoil the Danganronpa 3 anime for people who haven't seen it. And since this isn't a Danganronpa video, I'm sure there's people who haven't seen it who are watching this. But my main issue with the Danganronpa 3 anime was just pacing. I felt like there was way too much fan service in it. And I'm a bit concerned because the studio that they're using for this anime is Piero, which is pretty infamous for having animes with a lot of filler in it. So I am cautiously optimistic about this show, <laughs> but I don't want to get too hyped for it right now. I'll definitely keep up with updates and I'll let you guys know, you know, more about it as things kind of come out. And I do think the concept is interesting. I think the setting is cool. It's been a while since I've seen a lot of like cyberpunk anime, so I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, as of right now, I just don't want to get too overly excited like I did for the Danganronpa anime. Because then I'll just look back at the videos and be like, oh my gosh, why, why didn't I say this? Why didn't I say that? Why was I so blinded by my own hype? But yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like or a comment if you did enjoy it. It does let me know that you guys want me to keep talking about these updates regarding Tukio and their projects. Also, let me know what you think that the anime might be like. What are the things that you want it to cover? What are the things that um, you might be a little bit worried about it having in there? But yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys' opinions and I will see you guys real soon.